Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have this beastly 2005 Dodge Ram Cummins turbo diesel with a parasitic draw. The guy said he tried to figure out for three weeks and said, you know what, we'll just take it to a shop. <laughs> so here it is. And, you know, first looking at this thing, it has two batteries. So that's a variable. To do parasitic draw tests, you only really need one battery. They're hooked in parallel, so we should unhook one of the batteries, but otherwise it starts, it runs, no check engine light, no anything. So what I'm gonna do right now is just take off this negative terminal, rule this battery out, take our amp clamp, DC amps, and hook it around all these negative cables at once. And we have no draw. Fantastic. So apparently it's an intermittent parasitic draw. Still got a zero on the meter. But he said sometimes the uh, when the problem happens, there's some kind of dinger that goes off very faintly. I don't know what dinger that would be, but let's, let's start it up. You only need one battery to start it when it's warm. So there's a seat belt dinger. Let's uh try to put this seat belt on. See if that goes away. Yes it does. We open the door. This is door jar. So that those switches work. Open the passenger door. Does this radio not work? HVAC seems to work fine. Okay, shut that off. The radio doesn't work. Door locks work. Windows work. I don't know, let's shut it off again. Look at our meter. See how long it takes to go to sleep. So we have about 0.2. I'll let you know when, when that goes to sleep. It is 4.26 right now on the clock. So we don't actually have anything on our meter. And it was just a little drift. 0 0.08, not too worried about it. Um, I want to know how to get these dome lights to work. This thing was on when I first got in it. Now, I can't get it to turn on. There's this switch here. Cargo dome. So dome, nothing. Okay, so we have no dome lights and no radio. So we turn the key on, all the dome lights come on. Okay. <laughs> um, do they stay on indefinitely? Okay, so that, the switch has to do with those, I think. I can't get them to turn off. 
very weird. What is up with that? Something's changing. You see the voltage difference? And the engine's like... <laughs> so it's dim, bright, and the engine kind of stumbles. Bright. Okay. And how do we turn the dome lights off? I have no idea. Okay, that one you can click. But these, you can also click, I guess. Okay. So this is the override. So when this switches off, you can manually Oh, Chrysler. <laughs> um. I forgot to fix that guy. It'll break something. There we go. Okay. Put the switch in the on position. Okay. So you're telling me you can't turn on the dome lights when you just get in the truck without putting the key in? Well, that's kind of dumb. So one thing that's bothering me is we can't turn the headlights on when the key is out, and we can't turn the dome lights on when the key is out. Reading the owner's manual here. Lights on reminder. If the headlights, parking lights, courtesy lights, or cargo lights are left on after the ignition is turned off, a continuous chime will sound when the driver's door is open. That also does not happen. So, I think we're on the right track. We know something is not right with the lighting. But with the ignition on, you can actually turn on the headlights. Okay. So we need to figure out if we're missing like a constant power feed to the switch here. I have to look at a wiring diagram. And there's also some information on the dome lights, interior lights. Courtesy dome lights are turned on when the front doors are opened. When the dimmer control rotating wheel on the right side of the switch is rotated to the second upward detent position or if equipped when the unlock button is pressed on the key fob. So if we're here and the key is out, the dome lights should be on because when you're getting in your car, your key's not in the ignition. That would only make sense. <laughs> However, that does not seem to work. Dome lights only work when the key is in the on position. Okay, let's keep reading. <laughs> Rotating the dimmer control all the way down to the off detent will cause the interior lights to go out. This is also known as the party mode. <laughs> because it allows the doors to stay open for extended periods of time without discharging the vehicle's battery. Interesting. The brightness of the instrument panel light lighting can be regulated by rotating the dimmer control okay and there's also parade mode battery saver to protect the life of your vehicle's battery load shedding is provided for both the interior and exterior lights if the ignition is off and any door is left ajar for 15 minutes or the dimmer control is rotated upwards for 15 minutes the interior lights would automatically turn off Okay, the headlamps remain on. Exterior lights will automatically turn off after five minutes. After five minutes timeout, if the headlamp switch is turned off, then turned on, exterior lights will automatically turn on off after 15 minutes. If the dimmer control is rotated to the cargo lamp position, battery saver mode is canceled if the ignition is on. Okay, cool. It also doesn't have this headlamp delay if equipped. <clears throat> All right, 
So we definitely, some of this stuff doesn't work. So let's pull up a wiring diagram of the lighting circuit and see like how the dome lights are wired. What's the feed, the constant battery feed, when the key is out, you know, that constant battery power, that's what we're missing. So I pulled up a wiring diagram for the headlights. Let's just focus on the headlights. Right, left, module, integrated power, uh-oh. This is a smart system with the drivers inside this tip of my guess. And there's your headlamp switch, off park head fog lights. And they're basically little resistors, no real current going through them. Everything goes to the cluster. And then on the PCI bus, the cluster tells the integrated power module what to do with the headlights. Okay, let's also pull up the diagram for the interior lights. I'm sure they're powered by the TIPM as well. Interior lighting. Cluster, courtesy lamp driver, courtesy lamp driver, glove box lamp. Where are all the fuses? That's what I want to know. Cluster. Okay. It senses the door switches. We know the door switches are good. There's the door ajar warning light works. Let's see what else we have here. Lamp center bezel. Oh man. Okay, there is a fuse right there. 50 amp. That looks like it's it. So again, let's focus on dome lights where is the little switch the little dimmer switch that tells the dome lights when to turn on I think we might have to plug in the scanner here and see what the inputs are to the cluster and to the integrated um, power module and go from there because this system is all interconnected, interrelated. Well, I'm trying to connect my scanner and there's no power on the uh, DLC. <laughs> so let's trace that as well. All right, tracing down the DLC power, pin 16 right there. Come on, all data. And it comes from fuse 51, 20 amp. In the fuse box, fuse 51 is right there, and 20 amp cluster radio under hood lamp. Well, that's why our radio doesn't work. This little guy right here. Is it blown? That is my question, and how do you get it out is my other question. It's like one of those <laughs> weird slider things. All right, so test light to battery ground. If we touch a positive, it'll light up. 20 amp fuse. Power on one side. Power on the other side. However, our DLC is still dead in the water. So now we have to look for a break in the wire between the fuse box and the DLC. Well, that's gonna be fun. So my strategy is, you know, if there's a broken wire somewhere, instead of wasting time trying to find the break, let's do a bypass test first. So I got my power probe extension connected to battery positive and negative. 
a 15 amp fuse in here, so we're still playing it safe. It's even less than the 20 amp in the fuse box. And right here on the DLC, this gray and red wire I have pierced. That's going to be this gray and red right here, pin 16. So we're going to connect battery positive right to here. Hey, hey. We got dome lights. <laughs> Sweet. Now, if we, uh, and we should have headlights too. Sure enough. Okay, so on the right track, if we close the door, the dome lights should go off on their own. I believe, unless we're Okay, so they should dim out. I don't know why it takes like 15 seconds. But they should. Anyways, I'm, I'm impatient. Let's, uh, let's see if the radio works. Definitely should. There you go, the radio works. There's probably a CD in there. Six discs, whatever. Okay, let's plug in the scanner. Actually, before that, let's uh, let this thing go to sleep. Oh, great, now it's gonna. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> See if it goes to sleep. Let's put an amp clamp on our wires here. DC amps. Three zero. Now we're going to put it on all the wires, including our cluster fuse. Okay, so now we have the parasitic draw. 1.4 amps on those three fat wires, and there is nothing going on my bypass wire. Basically nothing. So this thing might have that power saver mode. I don't know if something's staying awake. Oh, glove box light is on. Okay, let's uh, take care of that. Did that turn off? Okay, that should be off. Now I'll have to wait for the dome lights to go off. Or we can just use this switch 1.2 amps okay now we can start the diagnosis okay so a few minutes later the truck actually went to sleep that is good news for us that means we need to fix the circuit that feeds the cluster and the radio and once that is fixed then everything should go to sleep appropriately and uh, we shouldn't have any other problems so that kind of narrows it down a lot. I just want to verify. I got zero on there. Zero on there. Okay, that makes me happy. And then on our bypass wire, again, zero. So all we need to do, and again, easier said than done, is trace that circuit from the fuse box to that DLC connector. Okay, so this fuse is good and this circuit's dead. Let's focus on the connector right under the integrated power module, C1 pin 9. If we go to connectors and look up 
uh, totally integrated power module connector locations, C1 should be the one closest to the firewall, I guess. If it's like a triangle. There's C1, and the connector view itself, C1 pin 9, should be right on the edge. And sure enough, it's our A114 gray and red fuse battery positive. So let's get this fuse box up and out, see what's going on there. Well, I found connector C1, and there's the gray and red wire. Hey, we got power here. But we don't have power in there. <laughs> so, nothing wrong with our integrated power module or the connector. So, we have to keep, go keep on going. So, the gray and red wire goes here and then into that conduit. That way, towards the instrument panel, and there's a big connector right here. All those wires come from the firewall in this huge jumble. So we can, I guess, disconnect this guy, find the gray and red wire here somewhere, and ah, uh, wonder if this connector just pops off. Oh, cool. So I'll do a little more digging. So I found the gray and red wire coming right out of this bulk connector. And we do test light to battery ground this time. That's the ground. Let's make sure our test light works. There it goes. Touch it here, nothing. And if we jump the bypass wire directly to here, we get our dome lights back on if we unhook it. So we're still dead on this side of connector 219. I want to check on the opposite side of the bulk connector. Hopefully we can find that wire or we can disconnect the connector and find the right pin. So one way to shortcut finding broken wires is look at splices and connectors. So where have we checked so far? We checked right after the uh, integrated power module. So we we're good here. Uh, we checked at the data link connector. We're not good here. So we're missing the power. This is 219. This is that bulk connector. On this side we're definitely missing power. And that's ahead of splice 204. What about splice 145? So this is a redrawn diagram where you can see all the splices but not the connectors. So all these things are offline. We don't have power. There's splice 145 and there is a wire, a gray and red wire that goes to the underhood lamp. Okay, so let's check the underhood lamp and if it's good here, then our problem is between the uh, the splice 145 and connector 219. If we're not good here, then the problem could be at the splice or going closer to the module. So we need to find a do this check and then find the location of this S145 splice. All right, here's the connector for the hood lamp and it doesn't work. There's the gray and red wire. Here we have a test light connected to battery ground. If we touch positive, it lights up. If we touch the wire, or the pin rather, we got nothing. So power's not making it past that splice S145. Let's see where that is. Okay, so splice 145, right there, it's pointing to right by the left fender should be the splice. Now, so the problem is somewhere from the tip of them right here to that splice. So we're getting pretty close, but this is the hard part where you actually have to start tearing apart the wiring harness. All right, so another quick bypass check since we have the gray and red wire here. Let's just jump our fuse positive straight to here and we'll check 
whatever's downstream. We'll check the splice, S145, and uh, everything else. So here it goes. Boom, dome lights just came on. If I unplug it. Dome lights turned off. Okay, so we ver now we just verified wiring integrity all the way to here. Splice 145 is good. The connector is good, everything that way is good. So something between here and the splice right here <laughs> is bad. Um, now again, we could dig around in this harness right here. Maybe it's rubbing on some bracket or something. And if we can't find the problem in this vicinity, then we could just run a jumper wire from there all the way to there and call it done. All right, so no real luck finding the broken spot. Here's the wire itself, gray and red, and I tugged it and if it was broken anywhere in here, it should have pulled out, but sometimes if you go too far in a wiring harnesses, you cause more damage than you're fixing. So what we're gonna do is quick and simple, solder in a wire from here to either a location right here, I actually found the gray and red, or we can go all the way to right here. Might be even simpler, We've got plenty of access room and uh, fix this thing up. Before we uh, jump to conclusions here, <laughs> double check your wire. I pulled the fuse out and our test light is still lit on the gray and red wire. Hey, maybe that's not the right wire. Maybe we're not quite done here and if we jump the wrong wire to the wrong wire, well, it would work. However, the problem might still be at the tip of them. So let's uh, undo that connector and see what's going on. Well, the connector doesn't look super happy. Definitely some some kind of corrosion in there. And the pins are over there, but let's check the right pin and make sure we get power when that fuse is in. All right, so this is nuts. With a test light, to determine the pin. It's gonna be a little hard to show, but middle row, top pin, Light does not light. Let's see, test light works. Oh my gosh. So many variables, you have to be careful. Test light works. Top row, top pin, test light works. Fuses in. And if I put the jumper wire on the other gray and black, or uh, gray and red, we don't have a test light. That's coming from that same pin. And again, to prove it, we can, we're on the right pin, take the fuse out, and now we should have no power on that pin right there. So if we're feeding power in here, and we're not getting power on either um, gray and red wires, our problem is, problem is in this connector. Let's rip this open, find the right pin, see what's going on in there. Ta ta ta, victory! The green and the crusty, right in that pin. So if we pull this guy, it's, uh, let's see, are we definitely on the right one? This one right here. Yep, our back probe is on the right wire, so if we pull it, Beautiful. So this guy was having worse and worse connection and the cluster wasn't falling asleep and that's it. So now we have to figure out how to repin that wire into this connector. Okay, so before depinning the connector and doing all that good stuff, Let's plug everything back in, jump power to here, and verify that everything works so we're 100% confident that this is the only repair we have to make. And I'm gonna spray everything with deoxit. All 
all those pins in there too. And uh, let's try that. Okay, perfect. I jumpered the fused power just to that one wire, the, uh, the broken wire, and dome lights work, headlights work. So that's all we need to do for this truck is to make that one wiring repair. Should be good to go. So after a little bit of time and effort, I managed to get the remains of the pin out of the connector. What we have to do is take off the face of it, this red locking thing, and then each pin is held in place by a blue tab. And uh, well, if you're doing this yourself, you'll figure it out. But right now I'm just trying to grab the remains and pull that sucker straight out. And all the green crusties are trying to hold it in. <laughs> Anyways, I'll get it out and see if we can re-solder it and put it back together. So the wire cleaned up very nicely, only the very tip was green. So clean that up and just solder that on, maybe fold it over and put it right back in the connector with some deox and maybe dielectric grease. All right, we got a beautiful solder joint. Solder worked, flowed very nicely. All the metal is clean. And now we just have to pop this pin back in the connector. All right, here goes nothing. The hole is sprayed with WD-40. And we're just gonna have to try to get this thing to go in there. Maybe a little plier action. Use a little pick, a screwdriver, whatever it takes to get that pin to slide back in. Like doing surgery even though I've never done actual surgery but I imagine it's kind of similar everything is has to be precise and I still got a long ways to go still got another half an inch to push that sucker through Maybe a little dental pick. Okay. Ooh, we're getting close. Yeah. On the right, almost, almost there. Oh, I think I heard it click. Okay. The pin is right there. And make sure you can't pull it out locked in and this guy right here I pulled out just to see how the connector looks and we'll put that back in the top slot there it clips right in finally sorry about the camera angle we'll put the red thing back in here awesome that should be a fix. And again, we'll deox it everything here. Plug it back in, fix the holes that we poked, and I don't know, this thing should work right, like a charm. Final verification of repair. Connector's plugged in. Let's push in the fuse. Hey, we got dome lights. Sweet. Now we can even plug in our Hood light, see if that works. It might not. <laughs> Wasn't one of the customer complaints, but. Okay. Hey, the bulb's burned out, but.
door jar, headlights work, and our key fob works too. It actually didn't work before. Dome lights go out. Let's put our amp clamp on there to make sure there's no parasitic draw. The fluke has nice big jaws on it. And if we can get a reading on here. So to make sure that goes to zero before we button everything up. And that's it. 0 0.02, as good as it gets. Awesome. So, <sighs> feels good to find the green crusties, right? Um, in this case, the parasitic draw was caused by a bad power feed to the instrument cluster, and we had all kinds of symptoms. The headlights, dome lights, radio didn't work, so everything related to that one bad power feed. Found it, fixed it, good to go. Uh, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.